guys, thanks for tuning in. We've got a ton to talk about in this video. Um, I haven't done one of these in a long time, but I felt like doing it. I've been planning it and working on it for a couple days. So here we are. We're going to do a full face of dupes slash alternatives. I'm basically going to turn out a look that's going to be exactly the same, but this side is going to be drugstore and this side will be high end. And in a couple of cases, maybe the drugstore product I feel isn't quite as good as high end, but in a lot of cases, maybe the drugstore is better than high end. But this is kind of to prove to you that these things can turn out basically the same look, okay? I recently asked on Instagram what your dupe requests are, and so I tried to work a lot of those into this um, look as well. Just give you a whole bunch of drugstore alternatives, some of them to things that I've loved and raved on recently, including this one. We're going to jump into foundation, NARS Sheer Glow. This is an awesome medium coverage foundation that looks so natural on the skin. I really enjoy the coverage, but what can you use that's a lot like this for a lower price? And I did some experimenting and I feel like the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow can get you pretty close to the look that the NARS Sheer Glow gives. And this is one that I've also compared to a foundation from Charlotte Tilbury called Light Wonder. Uh, I feel like that one's also very similar to this one. So I've got a couple shades in my Infallible, Creamy Natural and also Natural Beige. And what I'm going to do is use mostly Creamy Natural with just a hint of Natural Beige just to get uh, my perfect shade and get a shade that's very similar to what I have in the NARS and a teeny drop of that. Blend that together and that's going to go right here on this side of my face. And I did test drive this whole thing yesterday and it actually wore like incredibly similarly one side of the face to the other. I couldn't believe it hardly. That was really impressive. Uh, but I'm just using on this side of my face my Real Techniques RT Go brush. For foundation I'm using different brushes just so like I don't know. It doesn't mix too much one side of the face to the other. But look at this gorgeous coverage that's, I would say, medium. You know, it's not covering up every little flaw on the face, but it really smooths things out and it gives you the look of the glow, just like NARS Sheer Glow does, but without like flecks of shimmer or anything. It's a natural looking glow. Now, NARS Sheer Glow on the other side. I'm gonna use about half as much as I would normally use, so instead of a full pump, this will be half a pump. And I'll just use this Sephora 56 brush to blend this out today. Same kind of coverage level, same kind of glow level, definitely the same color tone. It really is amazing, isn't it? When you get right down to it and you start comparing things like this. I mean, I feel like I'm glowy on both sides. I'm medium coverage on both sides. It can sometimes be really hard to say with foundations like, oh, this is a dupe because things will perform differently for different skin types, perhaps. But these do look really similar to one another. One of the biggest requests that I got when I had asked on Instagram what things you want to dupes for, tons of people brought up this Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. This was like a big Emily Award winner. I absolutely love this brightening corrector. And it's not just about the color, this light kind of peachy pink color, but it's also the moisture level in this. I've always felt like I can put some of this on and it kind of amps up even any concealer that I might put on top and everything looks more natural and wears better because there's a little moisture in this, okay? But Becca's going out of business soon and everybody wants, you know, something different that they can count on. So while I may not have found that exact product at a drugstore price, I found a concoction <laughs> that I think can work and look similar. So so we're going back to Pixie. All right, this is a drugstore corrector. You can find it at Target. I've talked about it for years. It's in the shade Brightening Peach. It's a little richer, deeper peachy color compared to the Becca, and it doesn't have quite as much moisture. So I've been experimenting with different things I can add to this to make it exactly like the Becca. First off, if you love this color tone, and let me show you the difference, if you actually prefer something a little deeper and peachier compared to this light kind of pinky peach, and you just want it to have more moisture like the Becca, think about getting some kind of a hydrating stick like this one from Hard Candy, the Sheer Envy Coconut Water Primer Stick, and you can kind of blend some of this out on the skin, get some of this out of the pot, work it together, and you will have a richer, more hydrating version of this product. Now, if you really want to mimic the texture and and the tone of the Becca, there are a couple of things that you can effectively add to it to get there. One of them is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind in the shade called Brightener because it does have that kind of like 
pinky tone, real brightening shade. But if you mix it in with some of this, um, you get a little more thickness and you also benefit from that very effective corrector quality. So you can dab some of this on your skin first and then mix some of this in with it or mix them on your hand, whatever you wanna do. It's a little fussy, I'll admit, but I haven't come up with one exact product that dupes the Becca yet. Um, another possible mixer is this from Milani, um, the Supercharged Brightening Under Eye Tint in the Pink Rose shade. So um, this is very similar to Becca's tone. You add it to this, you lighten and brighten it up a little bit, and you get more moisture. Today, I'm going to take a little bit of the Instant Age Rewind Brightener, the very last bit of this one, because I know a lot of people have this. It's very accessible. I'm dabbing some of that right here. Um, I'll do a little bit right out here also. And then I'm going to take my Pixie and just dab that on top. Okay, the Pixie is really rich and creamy. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not trying to say that product can't exist and be successful on its own. However, the little bit of added brightness makes it a lot like Becca. If you kind of come to, you know, expect that pinky peach brightness, this really, really helps brighten up that under eye area. Plus, I think it gives it more of that creamy moisture level that the Becca has. So it's a texture dupe and a color dupe with this little combo. So I kind of feel like maybe I should be doing the high end side first and then be like, here's the, here's the alternative. Maybe I'll do that from here on out. Okay, so here's the Becca. Again, really creamy, really brightening. It's a wonderful product. You know, nobody wants to be in this position where it's like, oh, we have to come up with a dupe for this because they're going out of business. That's sad, but we can do it, you know? So I'm using this right around here. You might find that if you have really dark circles, a lot of discoloration like melasma or something, the tone of the pixie is going to be even more effective for you than the Becca might have been. Just because the deeper peach tone is going to tackle darker discoloration, that's just kind of the way it works. But there we are, we're nice and bright under both eyes. I might feel like maybe I'm a hint brighter under this eye to be honest with you. Now I wouldn't have to do this for this look really because I feel really good about the way things are coming together, but I do want to talk about a concealer alternative. I've been using this Dior Forever Cor Skin Correct Concealer in, what shade is it? 1N. Um, been playing with that a lot lately, and I thought, let's throw something on that can kind of do what that does coverage-wise, and I think it would be the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in Light Peach. I'm going to start out with this one, and I'm going to do a little dot of it there and a little dot out here and a bit by the nose, okay, just to tackle redness there. And then this one, as I was doing this yesterday, I feel like the shades are real similar and the coverage is pretty similar, if not a little better with the e.l.f., honestly. And the e.l.f. has a little bit richer, like a little thicker texture. That may or may not be what everyone wants, but... Okay, so I'm going to dab in this Dior side. First, I'm taking that concealer brush, and then I think I'll just use my foundation brush over it. Bingo, really pretty to get the nose. Love it. Now let's go over our e.l.f. side. Just get kind of a pinpointed blend and then we'll dab over the larger surface area with this. You see what I mean when I talk about a little more coverage over here? It's just a little thicker product. But all in all, I don't feel like I pay a price for that in terms of it looking thick and cakey because it is a very hydrating option. So here we are. One half of the complexion is drugstore, one half high end, and I'm feeling so good about things. Next for setting powder, um, this is one I know I've talked about before, but I still had a lot of requests for it, so it made me wonder if everybody has seen what I've already done. Also, so many requests that were things that I covered in my most recent dupes video, so if you haven't seen that, I will link to it below. Um, that covered a lot of things you guys were interested in. But the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder, my goodness, this is an iconic product. I think it's amazing. Um, it works so well setting the under eye and not looking heavy, setting the T-zone and improving staying power, but Maybelline fit me, y'all, especially this shade called Fair if you're really trying to get along the same lines of the, the one that's just called Translucent. I'm going to go into my Laura Mercier first, and yeah, I will have to use the same brushes kind of back to back, and I think that's okay. It doesn't really affect things that much, but I'm going over my under eye here to set it. I'm going over this half of the T-zone, <laughs> half the nose, and you can see just an even more perfected look. We're a little more mattified there. Okay, both of these powders are really good about mattifying, but yet they don't look too heavy and thick. Now we're going to go to the Maybelline Fit Me, tap out a bit of that, and the Fit Me comes in a lot of different shades, actually. 
and just begin dabbing this over the under eye, locking in that staying power. Down here on the T-zone, around the mouth, sometimes you can have a little product breakdown, and then up here around the forehead. Nice, nice. Since raving about Huda Tantor, here it is, <laughs> this product, um, a lot of people are wanting a dupe for this. However, I talked about that in my undupable video, and I don't feel like the product that I'm gonna use today is quite as good as this. It doesn't blend quite as easily, but for the purpose of looks, I think I can pull it off in terms of making it look the same. So Huda Beauty Tantor, I love it so much because it is like the easiest to blend and perfectly toned contour bronzer product. That's a cream here. So I wear it in the shade light. I think it's just gorgeous. It's easy to use. I just really don't have anything bad to say about it. I would typically go straight in with the brush and blend in, but so you can see better the amount I'm applying, I'm gonna go in with my finger and I'm gonna give myself a streak up here and a streak right in that zone. And yeah, it's so good that those streaks can sit there and it's still gonna blend super easily for me. Um, then I have this stick from Physicians Formula. It's the Sculpting Bronzer Stick in the shade Mocha. And I'm gonna do a streak of that right here, and a streak of that here. I can just tell as I streak it on, it's thicker. You know, it's gonna be a little bit more of a job to blend. And that's really the main difference. This Huda just blends like nothing. Light pressure, not causing any issues. I could easily build up that color a little more if I wanted to, but like it works so well. And look under the cheekbone. Just circular motions. I'm using this um, Extreme Structure Contour brush from Sigma, what's the number, F04. And the result is that really easy, effortless blend. Now I go over this, I'm pressing a little harder. It's not terrible, I've tried worse, but it's, it's getting the job done. I'm just, this is kind of thing where you'd have to kind of feel it to s yourself to know how much pressure I'm applying right now. It's more than I'd like to apply, but it's not terrible. But looks wise, just looking at the skin, we're getting a similar effect. In fact, maybe do I need to build up the Tantor side just a hair? See, the thing about the stick is that more thickness kind of comes off the stick than when I put my finger in the Tantor. There we go. That looks about right. <laughs> Next, I'm going to share a cream blush option here. Um, if you like these nude sticks, nudies matte face colors, I have one here in the shade Body Language. The way these work, they have a little brush on one end and then the product is on the other. And they're this beautiful, like, matte cream formula. And they do work really well, but I've got a great dupe for this. Um, so I'm going to just swipe some of this on this cheek right over here. And then my dupe is this Physicians Formula Triple Defense Multicolor Stick. This is in the shade Natural Rose. And this is actually a really pretty color on the lips as well. And if you like a nice rosy, creamy cheek, this is awesome. This also has sunscreen in it, SPF 20. And I like the smell. It's like subtle sunscreen smell. <laughs> I really like it. But I'm just gonna blend these out and show you this beautiful, like, natural rosy cheek we're gonna end up with. I'm using my Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush, but the full size of this is the 56, and it's the exact same size brush head. But there we are with the nude sticks. And you're gonna see over on this side as well, rosy color, but a matte look. But it isn't cakey at all, because again, it is a cream product, but look at that color. Such a great match, and you can again use these on the lips as well. Here's another super popular request that I found. Um, in addition to the Becca Corrector, the Becca Highlighters. Um, people asking for dupes there, and I've definitely got one. This is the shade from Becca called Pearl. And the line from Milani that's called Strobe Light Instant Glow Powders, the texture on these is so similar to Becca. This is my mini, <laughs> um, but I've been talking about this for years how this is a very luxurious, soft, pigmented, high quality highlighter feel without the chunks of shimmer that Becca never had, you know? Becca doesn't play that way. They're beautiful highlights that they make. And this shade called Afterglow, I feel like gives me the same look on the cheeks. However, looking at them head on, wouldn't you say that the Afterglow maybe has a tinge more warmth? Technically, I feel like this shade would fall somewhere between Becca's Pearl and Moonstone. Okay, Moonstone is a little bit warmer yet, and this shade would fall kind of in the middle, but by the time they shear out on the cheeks, they're really doing the same thing, this one and Pearl. So we're gonna make that work. I'm gonna show you exactly how. I'm gonna go in with my setting brush here from Real Techniques. This is a beautiful shade, super brightening, okay? And just blend over it. 
and you've got that beautiful soft highlight. I'll also go up to the forehead with whatever's left on the brush. But I feel so good about that. I love that shade. Now we're going to go to the Milani. Same amount of product used. And look at that stunning glow. And then just buff over it. What I tend to do is after I get that initial amount applied, I'll dust off on my hand and then come back. That's what's going on there. So I don't have too much on. But you're getting that light, super brightened glow that could work on any skin tone and show up effectively. Even like really fair skin could enjoy that so much. Do I need a little more Becca here? Just to hang with that a little better? Maybe? Let's do the Cupid's bow. Let's literally do one side of the Cupid's bow this and one side this. And you can see just, they're the exact tone. And then shoo, 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 soften it up, soften it up. It's crazy, guys. It's really working out. We're moving on to brows. I've got my It Cosmetics Brow Power here. This is not the skinniest of the brow pencils, okay? This is a, kind of an oval shape, but overall like a medium thickness for a pencil, and it has the spoolie on the other end. And you know we're taking the e.l.f. Instant Lift, and we're doing the same brow on the other side, and it's similar thickness, only the e.l.f. transfers down just slightly easier. This is a little bit more firm. Now, my mom loves this shade. She's like light blonde hair. She would wear this in the taupe color. I've got it in the Universal Dark Brunette. Hers, I think, is Universal Taupe. And she really loves it for the tone. And I know that blondes, sometimes, like, you got to be on point with that color so it doesn't look too warm if you don't want it too warm. So that really works for her. And I'm not sure. Maybe I should try to have her test an elf and just see, like, if I can find a proper shade for her in that. If there are any blondes wearing this, what color do you like to wear? Because for me, in this one, it's neutral brown. I've got that on there, super quick, super easy. I've got no problem with that product, but I mean, gosh, this e.l.f. It's got a similar thickness, it's a retractable pencil, and it's $2. I feel like I can get away with a little lighter pressure being applied here because the product does lay down slightly easier. But gosh, this feels different because I've been using that Benefit pen so much lately. It feels weird to use an actual pencil in my brows again. By the way, all the people asking for Charlotte Tilbury dupes, I will again link below to a dupe video I did exclusively about Charlotte Tilbury products. Other things have also sporadically come up in other dupe videos, so I'll have that info for you down below. Guys, I'm going to give you the drugstore and high-end split even right down to brow gel. I don't think these two are dupes at all, <laughs> okay? I'll say that, but they're both clear brow gels, and to the naked eye, it's going to seem like the same thing is happening here. But the M Cosmetics brow gel, this is called Flexibrow. This is going to be the least gooped up wand you ever use in your brows. Like, no excess. You'll even find yourself wondering if product is getting on there. But then you feel it. You It sets just a little bit, and you're like, oh, okay, there is some there. But that's kind of crazy. The avocado one from uh, Milani is a clear brow gel, and it does come out with a little extra goop, but it's drugstore, and it works. <coughs> There you have it. For eye primer, guys, I'm going to use Milani on both sides because I just don't have on hand right now like an Urban Decay Primer Potion. If I did, that's what I'd use. I'd be putting that on my high-end eye and the Milani on the other and having the exact same result, <laughs> except maybe better staying power on the Milani side. Okay, high-end side, you got a gift today. Like I said, tons of people asking about Charlotte Tilbury products, and I've got a couple eye quads here. I've got the Exaggerize Quad. It looks like this. I mean, people love these, but the colors really are pretty basic on the inside. Dusty Rose, a little bit of a soft gold, a champagne, and this color is sort of dazzling. It looks very taupey there. But you look at a swatch, and it's got like a really fine shimmer. It doesn't really always lay down the best or show the best, um, but that's in there. I've got another quad here called the Dolce Vita. I think they renamed this, but kept the colors the same. It's like got a bronze, an even deeper, dirtier bronze, a burgundy, and a light pearl shimmer. So I feel like I've pretty much duped both of those palettes in my Maybelline Nudes of New York. This has burgundy in it. It has the dusty rose. It's got the shimmer. It's got the bronze. It's got the um, more goldeny shimmer. So I could basically get the same look out of either of these in this. This is, I've been saying it for a long time now, this is probably the best neutral palette in the drugstore. Okay, for variety's sake, for texture and quality's sake, it is so, so good. I would highly recommend it. And 
and if I had more Charlotte Tilbury on hand, I would probably be finding more dupes within it. But today we're just gonna do a basic look. I'm gonna use the Exaggerize Quad and I'm gonna do this whole eye and then I'm gonna dupe the whole thing with the other palette. First things first, we're going into the Dusty Rose and this palette's gonna give us a pretty look. I'm not trying to take away from everything high end, but the price on these quads is honestly ridiculous for a quad. And if you can get that and so much more in the Nudes of New York palette for maybe just over $10, why, why not? Oh, also I have kind of an answer to the shimmery shade here. If you're like, yeah, but I want that glimmery color that really isn't worth it, but I want that in here. Think about getting one of these e.l.f. liquid eyeshadows. I have the shade called Pinky. What is that called? Pinky Swear. And you can dab this over your lid and still get that glimmery look if you wanna use that. For me today, I'm pretty much sticking to these three colors though. Okay, so Dusty Rose all over the lid. Then I'm gonna take, let's see, some of this kind of goldeny looking color. It's really soft, guys. Like, it's not gonna show up like crazy. I'm gonna pat that over most of the lid and then just brighten it up with some of the soft pearl right in here. That around the inner corner. I feel like I kind of have to build these shades a little bit. Um, and let's like also take a little more Dusty Rose just to the outside of the lid. Layer that up a bit. Okay, easiest look ever, but honestly a pretty basic look that a lot of people might realistically want to do day to day. Dust off my brush here. We're gonna take Nudes of New York and I'm going into the shade called Explorer. That's gonna be your Dusty Rose, the equivalent shade to the Charlotte Tilbury. We'll just get that going here in the crease. It's easy, it's basic, but it works. Then I'm gonna use the shade called Founder right here. This has that little bit of goldeniness. I'm gonna dab that over most of the lid. And then for our light pearl shade, we'll go to Originator. Right there, that one. And that's gonna be our inner lid brightness. And I think I also went back to the Dusty Rose. I'm just trying to keep this very easy to follow. If you're like, gosh, this is so few steps, I'm trying to keep it minimal because I'm like trying to dupe a process and a look from one eye to the next and I want it to be easy to understand and follow. I feel like maybe Explorer is a little richer than the Dusty Rose and the Charlotte Tilbury palette. I'm feeling slightly compelled to go back into this and add more. Like to look at them, they really look like exactly the same color, but I swear the Maybelline is a bit more pigmented. Okay, I'm building up the Charlotte Tilbury just a little bit. And there we are. Now, oh my gosh, guys, another thing I talked about, like Huda Tantor in my undupable video, but y'all are still like, give me a dupe for that though. Um, it Cosmetic Superhero Mascara. I've got something that I think is going to give, it, I know it gives a similar look. It's not quite, it's a little bit more of a wet formula and it doesn't dry quite as quick, which is not good because that's a key thing that I love about this and what I think helps hold my curl better. But the uh, Wet n Wild Big Papa, I do think can satisfy me on the thickness and length side of things. And it does build fairly quickly. So I'm gonna do that on each eye today. Yeah, I am kind of skipping eyeliner here. I'm just keeping it sort of a soft look. You'll see with the lip too, the lip is gonna be really soft today. And we all know if I was gonna dupe a black matte liquid liner that's high end, I would be using my Milani 17 hour wear and it would just be perfect. And that's, that's the one you wanna get if you need a nice black liquid liner that will last through childbirth. That's, that's the one. Okay, so it Cosmetics Superhero over here on this eye. No joke, guys, like a couple passes through and it's looking like a million bucks. Alrighty, looks great. I might add just a little bit more. Second coat giving a little more thickness. That's what I expect out of it Cosmetics Superhero. Awesome. It looks wonderful. It just fully transforms the eye look. Now let's curl this side. And I really, really enjoy doing a video this way. And I would like to do more dupe videos in this style because we get to have that honest talk about, are there some differences actually? You know, are there some things that make it maybe better than the high end side or worse slightly, but overall the look ends up the same. It's fun to just be able to really demonstrate it all in a very visual way. Okay, so the Big Papa, haven't really talked about this mascara a lot, but it's a natural bristle brush with a slight hourglass shape and a taper toward the tip, which I like. And the hourglass isn't 
super deep to where you feel like your lash line can't even hit it. You can see this is building up a little bit faster and with more thickness and length than a lot of mascaras would. The difference you'll find is that it takes quite a bit longer to dry than the IT Cosmetics. And sometimes that aspect can weigh down the lashes a little bit more and just not be quite as conducive to holding a curl. But maybe with a little more age on this tube. I've had it and used it on and off for a couple weeks, but maybe as it gets a little older, it will uh, start to dry faster. But I've basically given this a couple of coats, meaning I've gone over it, I've dipped back into my tube, and I've done some more. And I'll let you guys see what it looks like. I mean, pretty satisfying length and thickness, and I always struggle to make my left eye look quite as good lashwise as the right eye, but I think it's doing a really good job today. Now, I don't have an exact Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions dupe. This was also requested, um, so I'm going to put this on my lower lashes on both eyes, but I welcome anything that you think I should try that's a good tubing mascara that does not smudge or flake off at all. I welcome your ideas there. And then for lips, by request, um, people asking for a dupe for White Russian. This is from Buxom. So this is one of their iconic plumping lip creams. Um, it definitely gives you a cooling sensation on the lips, and I will admit that I feel that cooling sensation more with this product than my dupe product. But there is still some cooling with this. This is the Milani Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper. The shade is Soft Rose, okay? If you're looking for a beautiful nude lip gloss, this one is slightly more opaque than this one, just by a little bit. And it may be good news to some people that it doesn't have quite as much tingle as the Buxom, if that's a deal breaker on that. But I'm gonna put that white ration all over this side of my lip. Got a little bit overboard there. Not used to just doing half the lips at once. But it's creamy, it's kind of milky. It really is a pretty nude gloss, no doubt about it. But then we're gonna take this side and hit it with the Soft Rose from Milani. And this has just a little more, hint more opaque nude color. That's what makes this so special. This is one of the best nude lip glosses, period, because you can see it. But all in all, I would say it's like a similar looking lip. The key difference here is that the Buxom is going to be a hint stickier, just a little thicker feeling and more of a cooling sensation, which is kind of odd to feel on one half of the face or the other. It's like, am I having a migraine right now? But guys, that wraps it up. This is my finished look. It ends up amounting to like a really soft spring makeup look, I feel, with glowy skin. The eye is super duper easy, um, but I think it's so cool to see that there's an alternative that's like a full palette that could give you so many other kinds of looks, you know, um, but it most definitely dupes a couple of my Charlotte Tilbury quads. So that was a really satisfying find. What else made me so, so happy? I was really happy with the foundations, actually, um, realizing that the Infallible Pro Glow, which is a foundation I've loved for years, to see that come in and perform so much like NARS was kind of like, oh, okay, I get it now. You know, you look back at those things that you've loved. Why did I love it? And why do I love this current product? Well, you know, they're very similar. And then um, I felt really good about finding a similar way to use the Pixie product to make it a little bit more emollient and brightening like the Becca. I was really happy about that. Gave you a few suggestions on how to use that alongside Side other things to just make it work its best for you. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you love this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up so I know and I can do more of this. I love you. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.